I think castles are amazing because they have survived for hundreds of years. And it is fascinating seeing how they developed and change as necessity has demanded. This is a really interesting example of a significant change in building design for castles. From what was probably a conventional Mott and Bailey wooden castle that was totally swept away to be replaced by a stone built one that was on raised ground with round towers. This castle was also very closely associated with two others nearby, Grossmont Castle and White Castle, which I will do separate videos on. This is Skenfrith Castle in Monmouthshire, Wales. This video will provide a brief history, context and visiting tips, and also a little something extra I noticed whilst walking around the outside of the walls. I aim to visit and make short videos on many castles across the country in addition to my regular ones. So please like, subscribe and click the alerts bell for future releases. Thank you for watching Eclectic Experience. Change seen through images. Skenfrith Castle is located here in Monmouthshire, Wales, roughly eight miles from Monmouth. On this map from Historic Wales, the red shaded area is the castle, which is a grade two listed building and also a scheduled ancient monument. Scanthrith Castle was originally built by the Normans shortly after the conquest of England, possibly around 1070, to take control of the local area. It would initially have been a wooden building, possibly with a keep on top of a mound and round the Bailey area. Archaeological evidence suggests the site could also have been occupied by the Romans. However, unusually for a castle, the mound appears to have been flattened when the castle was upgraded between 1219 and 1232. And it is the remains of that rebuild that we largely see today. It was thought the raised bank around the tower could have been the base of the old mot, but again, archeological evidence suggests not. For context, and to get an idea of just how old this site is, this is a list of monarchs from the present, King Charles III, going back to William I, William the Conqueror. Setting aside the possible Roman occupation, the initial wooden fortress was probably constructed just after the Norman conquest, around 1070, at the time of, not surprisingly, William the Conqueror. And then what we see today was mainly constructed between 1219 and 1232. This puts the work very clearly in the reign of Henry III. The castle lost much of its military significance following the actions of Edward I, and by 1282, it then went into a decline. So, what remains today? This is the view of the entrance to the castle, through a gap that was once a gatehouse. This is an image from the board on the site, showing how the castle might have looked with the ditch, then being a moat, and the gatehouse in front. After going up the entrance steps, there is a pretty impressive round tower, what looks like near the middle of the enclosure. Most of the exterior walls are to quite a height, and there are some significant towers. The original Norman castle mound was probably flattened to increase the height of the castle, in part to deal with the flooding from the river next door, that the castle was built, or one of its roles, was to control this river. Interestingly, the uneven ground we see here is probably the spoil from the 1950s archaeological work when lower rooms were uncovered, rather than how it was originally left. The new castle made use of the latest military knowledge, building straight walls, protected by protruding round towers with a central round tower to allow the defenders to see over the top of the surrounding walls. A couple of interesting features. If you look in the surviving corner towers and then look down, they are deep stone pits with no stairs. It is thought they would have been intended for storage in the event of a long siege though they could get a bit damp. 
The central round tower dominates the castle. It is in fairly good condition and it is possible to see where the entrance was halfway up the wall. This would originally have been entered by an external wooden staircase. Also, if we look at an illustration of how it might have looked, the top of the tower would almost certainly have had a wooden structure on top to aid defence. One of my favourite parts of the castle is the water gate. This line of steps that goes down and out next to the river. The river, as we can see, played an absolutely key role in the design and use of this castle. Some history. Why was this castle built? The initial wooden structure, like the majority of castles in the United Kingdom, were built by the Normans following the conquest to enforce control over the local population. Scamfrith, along with Grossmont Castle and White Castle, were then rebuilt in stone and modernised to address the then threat to the Norman kings from the Welsh. These castles were in the marches or the borderlands with the Welsh lords. Scamfrith was only of military use for a relatively short time until the English kings no longer saw the Welsh lords as a threat, which happened around 1282. The castles would have carried on being administrative centres and law courts etc, but slowly declined and by 1538 they were described as derelict. Interestingly, all three castles had the same owner from 1138 to 1902. All three are now administered by Cadu, though Skenfrith is actually owned by the National Trust. This is the little something extra I mentioned at the start. Whilst walking round the wall, I came across this very interesting water wheel and associated woodwork right next to the castle. It is in a very decayed state, but now I found it very interesting to see. A bit of research shows it is, uh, not surprisingly, Scanthrith Mill. It was built in 1867 and the mill itself was actually still working until the 1990s. But by then it was no longer depending on water as it had been electrified. Visiting tips. The castle is free to enter at any reasonable time with car parking right out in front of it. It is in the centre of the village and pretty well signposted. The interior of the castle is accessed over grass and then up some steps. The steps down to the river gate from inside the castle are broken so care needs to be taken though it is possible to actually walk round the outside of the castle to get to the river and the water wheel though again the ground is uneven. This is a good castle to visit with substantial remains and it is interesting how, just as often happens with building projects today, most of what was there before was swept away to make way for a new building with the latest design and functionality. That in itself then became obsolete, as is the way in a constantly changing world. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Please like, click alerts for future releases and subscribe. Brought to you by Eclectic Experience, change seen through images.